Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the campus of Pittsburgh State University for this very, very special occasion. Families, graduates, faculty, and staff, very, very glad that you're all here to celebrate this very special moment in this very well-deserved moment as well. You know, from prospective student visits to rumble to move-in day to family day, we love to see our families on this campus. We know you've been an important part of the journey of these graduates, and we hope that your interactions with Pittsburgh State University have been very, very positive. They've certainly been good for us. We hope you'll also continue to be a part of Gorilla Nation, the parents who have gotten connected to us over the years. We hope that connection remains. I also hope that you'll feel a sense of pride and ownership as your graduate walks across the stage. I hope you have that sense that you participated and supported and that you made a difference. And graduates, I hope that uh, you, you're enjoying this day, a long anticipated day. It's a moment to stop and think about no more homework, no more quizzes, no more exams, no more group projects. People always love group projects. At least for a while, I trust that this isn't the end of your learning, but uh, it's certainly a pause in it, and I think it's important that you stop and, and enjoy that for a moment. You know, you're earning tonight something you'll carry with you throughout your life. A degree from Pittsburgh State University will open doors, it'll help you make connections, it'll sustain you in good times, and I would bet it's even more important in difficult times. Tonight's the perfect opportunity to look back at the time, energy, sweat, and effort that's led to this accomplishment, as well as looking forward, as Dr. Olson just talked about. Before I offer a few words of wisdom, I want to thank our faculty and staff as well. They have played a critical role in the lives of these graduates, and, and, and it's just important that we thank them once again. You know, in 2009, October, I was inaugurated as the ninth president of Pittsburgh State University. And in that speech, I quoted an educator from the 1800s named Mark Hopkins. And he observed that an ideal college is Mark Hopkins on one end of a log and a student on the other. You know what? That's still true today. Mark Hopkins is represented by our great faculty and staff. And you, of course, on the other end of that log, but now it's not a log. It's a modern classroom, well-equipped laboratory, a blue cable that comes out of the wall called an Ethernet cable that connects you, or a Wi-Fi connection. Even so, it's that one-on-one -on -one relationship that leads to learning and to growth and to transformation, both for you and for us. So thank you, faculty and staff, for investing in these graduates and supporting them along their journey. And now for a few words of wisdom. This is hard to believe, but this is my 49th commencement as president. Who's counting? I get, evidently, I am. I have a math degree from Pittsburgh State. My family up there applauding. That's amazing. So, so at the 8 o'clock session, I'll reach my 50th ceremony. Tell you the truth, I love this ceremony. I'm as excited tonight to be here as I was on that very first one. It's just that important to this institution and to you and to your families. You know, as I look back over the years of the comments that I, and the quotes that I've used, it's an eclectic group to say the least. I've quoted people like Steve Jobs, one of my favorites, Muhammad Ali, Coach Pat Summit, Mark Twain, Martin Luther King Jr., Yogi Berra, Bill Clinton, and even lyrics from the Broadway show, Wicked. Man, that covers a lot of ground. But tonight, I thought I'd cite some wisdom from our very own graduates. Over the past few ceremonies, we've been collecting what you all have been putting on your mortar boards. Now that's wisdom. And so I'm going to share some of those thoughts tonight, and some of those came about just in the last week. In fact, the last 24 hours. So here goes. Some of those comments on the top of your mortar boards are about the experience you just completed. Like this one. Just did it. Well, the importance of that is that graduate is now working at Nike. Wow, that's pretty clever. There's beauty in the struggle. Fueled by coffee. You gotta love that. Nevertheless, she persisted. Well, that's an interesting one. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for giving me the world. She turned her can'ts and her cans into her dreams 
and her plans. That's pretty cool. Some of them wrote about what comes next. Can I take a nap now? <laughs> next stop, grad school. We're, we're all stories in the end. I'm making mine a good one. I like that. I like this one too. Holy cow, from a graduate who's headed to get her vet med degree. Pretty cool. Some just wanted to make a statement about making a difference. I teach, what's your superpower? Ooh, that's pretty good. It takes a big heart to help shape little minds. That's pretty cool too. And then some offered advice about life. Never grow up. I think I've mastered that one. In it for the outcome, not the income. Ooh, I like that. Be greater than average. That came from a math graduate, and she wrote a slick little equation that when you read it, it says B is greater than average. Very cool. Believe there is good, Megan Peabody. That was yours, right? A social work major at Pittsburgh State University. And if you know Megan, believe there is good fits her exactly. We have to be the women we want our daughters to be. Like that. And of course, some of you just put letters on there that seem to make no sense. O-A-G-A-A-G. -A -A -G. Once a gorilla, always a gorilla. That's probably my favorite. Sorry, Megan, but that's an awesome one. So speaking of our very own graduates and drawing inspiration from them, I hope you saw the article we just released this week about a young man named Luis Carlos Gonzalez Rodriguez. Tonight, he's completing his MBA degree. His journey has taken him from his home country of Venezuela to studying at Cambridge and now Pittsburgh State University. His inspiration, his mother. Her name is Milagro. And in English, that means miracle. Wow, what a beautiful name. Just two weeks ago, Luis published a, he self published a book where he celebrated his mother and the inspiration that she provided to him. And he had a presentation on campus and I heard a lot of good things about it. Entitled The Miracle of Life, it's a story of overcoming obstacles such as poverty and fear to achieve much through education, a lesson his mother had taught him. Well, Luis learned the lesson well and while at Pitt State, he supported himself, working in Gibson Dining Hall, painting for the physical plant in the summer and performing custodial work in Russ Hall. His bit of wisdom, I want people to know that if you work hard, study hard, and don't give up, you can overcome challenges. Luis has certainly done that, and he offers us a wonderful example of the journeys represented in this class tonight. At this time, I'd ask Luis to stand, and also his mother, who's joined us from Venezuela. Milagro, would you please join us and stand, and let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Mucho gusto. That's as far as I go. Mucho gusto. That means glad to meet you. <clears throat> great story. It's great that it, it culminates at this place at this time, and each of you has a story to tell. In closing, I've got a final couple of thoughts I want to share with you tonight, and really the message is for everybody, not just our graduates. Have you heard of Lori McKenna? Now, some of you might think I only listen to Adele, but I've branched out a little bit. Well, Lori McKenna is a successful Nashville songwriter who just a few weeks ago was on the stage of the Bicknell Center with three other Nashville artists. And she has the capacity, as many songwriters do in Nashville, of capturing some amazing truths and messages. And she has won all kinds of accolades for her songwriting including CMA awards and Grammy or two. She's been very, very, very recognized in her work. Well, she wrote the song, Humble and Kind. Have you heard that? Who sings that? No country folks here? Tim McGraw. That's the song that Tim McGraw has made famous. So as I listened to that song that night, I thought, what a powerful message that is, and I want to share that at commencement. 
The lyrics include the line, listen to this, I know you've got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. If that doesn't fit this moment, not just in this room, but in this nation, in this world, I don't know what does. How about this part? When the dreams you're dreaming come true, when the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. And finally, as you move through your career, think about this quote, this piece of the song. When you get where you're going, don't forget, turn back round, help the next one in line, but always stay humble and kind. This world needs humility, and this world needs kindness. And I would say if you put those two characteristics with a Pittsburgh State University degree, you will do well in this world, and you'll make this world better. So with that, I too offer my congratulations to the class of 2017. Let's give them another round of applause.